Coming up, a preview of the Cubs and the White Sox seasons. Plus, March is here and the madness is just around the corner. RSL reporters Lucas Kim and William Bazone join me in discussing our A-10 predictions. I'm Kirsten Richardson. And I'm Vanessa Hoxa. All this and so much more. Rambler Sports Locker begins now. Well, it's good to be here, angry with you. Yes. Mind you, the red wasn't planned. I know no. it's not the same <laughs> shade, but same family, mm -hmm. we said, and it wasn't planned. No. So, just so everyone knows. <laughs> Anyways, it's good to be here. First, I want to talk about the Duke and Wake Forest game. Oh, yes. Um, the upset that happened. That in and of itself is a story, but player Kyle Filipowski injured after yeah. fans storm the court after Wake Forest upset. What do you think about that? It was a lot. I was on Twitter and people were talking about it yeah. and it was just tweet after tweet after tweet. A lot of people were saying it was a disgrace from the Wake Forest crew yeah. and it was a lot. I, I, I felt bad for him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm on the same page as you. I think that kind of that needs to stop. I mean, you can't have these these key players getting injured exactly. for non-game related things. That's just the saddest thing ever. But in more basketball news, the A-10 tournament's coming up. Yes. So exciting for the Ramblers. I am very, very excited for them. They got a big shot to win. Yeah, and we'll talk about that more later on in the episode. But speaking of the Ramblers. Yes, the Ramblers had an eventful week. Evan Nave is here to give you your Rambler rundown. Thanks, Kirsten. This past Tuesday, the men's basketball team lost at St. Bonaventure University 79-64. Although they were not victorious in this game, Philip Alston and Braden Norris had impressive performances of 11 and 12 points respectively. They'll take on 21st ranked Dayton tonight at 8. The Loyola women's golf team finished 14th place in the Rio Verde Invitational. Next, they'll head to the ball the Ball State Puerto Rico Classic beginning on March 5th. The women's basketball team celebrated Senior Day with a comeback win of 64 to 61 points on Sunday against the University of Dayton. Stick around for more details on that later in the show. On Sunday, the Loyola women's softball team beat Pittsburgh by a score of 8 to 0 in the South Florida Showdown. That was their sole win of the five-game tournament. For men's volleyball, Loyola won its fourth match in the MIVA against Lindenwood after losing to them 3-1 to the night before. And finally, in track and field, the Loyola women's team won five A-10 titles during the Atlantic 10 Indoor Track and Field Championships this past weekend. My name is Evan Nave, and this was the Rambler Rundown. Thanks, Evan. Leap day just passed, but William Bazone is still in the holiday spirit. Thanks, Kirsten. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to know, what do athletes wear on leap day? Jumpsuits! Ha! Huh. Get it? No? All right, well, in the month of February, we saw a lot of great performances from our teams, but today, I'll be ranking five athletes who took a leap forward this past month. This might be cheating, but at number five, we have both of our track and field distance medley relay teams. Both set records at the Atlantic 10 Indoor Championships last weekend. The men's re relay team of Miguel Abaitua, Gabe Smith, Jason Clayton, and James Howell ran into the winner's circle, clocking the fourth fastest time in program history at 9 minutes and 51 seconds. On the women's side, Emma Watke, Kate Wojcikowicz, Fran Hendrickson, and Grace Kuhn set a new program best of 11.38 and took third in the meet for their effort. And number four, we'll turn to senior forward Satori Tannen on the women's basketball team. In seven games this month, she averaged 12 points and six and a half rebounds. She also had two double-doubles and is a player teams will have to keep an eye on next week at the Atlantic 10 tournament in Richmond. At number three, freshman Daniel Fabikovic has been a real hit for John Hawks' men's volleyball squad, looking to repeat as MIVA champions this year. He played strong matches against Ohio State on February 9th and in their doubleheader against Lindenwood this past weekend. He stands second on the team with 171.5 total points and 147 kills. At number two, we'll go to the softball diamond, where junior pitcher Peyton Pepkowski started right where she left off last season. She currently tops the Atlantic 10 in wins, 
complete games and shutouts, and see she is second in strikeouts. And for my top pick, take a look at your watch because it's Dame time. Men's basketball forward Dame Adelican was a key player for the Ramblers. The graduate transfer from Dartmouth scored double figures in five of seven games this month, capped off by a 21-point effort against Rhode Island on the 18th. Are the Ramblers primed to win the A-10 this year? We'll talk about that later on in the show. William Bazone for Rambler Sports Locker. We will, in fact, talk about that later, William. I will join you in talking about that. But the men's volleyball team traveled to St. Charles, Missouri for back-to-back -back games against Lindenwood last weekend. Natalie King is here with the recap. The Ramblers men's volleyball team had a busy weekend in Missouri with two matches against Lindenwood University. Friday night's game started with a first set loss for Loyola, 25-21. The Ramblers came back stronger in the second set to win 25-23, but were not able to hold on to this momentum and lost set 3, 26-24, and set 4, 29-27. While the Ramblers may not have won Friday's match, junior Parker Van Buren surpassed 1,000 career kills during the game. The Ramblers were able to turn things around for Saturday night's match with a 3-1 victory over Lindenwood to win their fourth MIVA match of 2024. Loyola won the first set 25-23, the third set 25-14, and the fourth set 25-17. Men's volleyball isn't the only team coming off of a win. Here's Taylor Zielenbach with more on how the women's basketball team defeated Dayton this weekend. I'm in Gen 2 Arena today where we got to see the Loyola seniors of the women's basketball team highlighted and commemorated for the hard work that they've put in for the past few years on the team. It was also their last home game and they got to take home a smashing victory against the Dayton Flyers with a final score of 64-61. to Here are your highlights. It was senior day for our graduating players. There was an honorary commemoration before the game highlighting each senior who came along with their loved ones. The fans in the stands definitely made our team feel loved as they cheered them on in this bittersweet moment for everything they've contributed over their time at Loyola. There was much standoff in the first quarter, having a slow start with seven timeouts, total three by Loyola and four by UD. The game picked up quickly in the second quarter, ending with a score of 26-24 to with UD still in the lead. This tight score carried into the third quarter but ended with UD still in the lead with a score of 43-42. to the Ramblers took the fourth quarter over after three quarters of being behind, leading to their win. The seniors definitely did shine on court today. Dominating the court, Sam Golanopoulos led with 16 points. Player Satori Tannen showed her excellence in both defensive and offensive work with a total of four blocks and 10 points scored. Coach Allison Guth highlighted these players after the game. Again, you're stepping away um, with, with Kathy Sam leading the charge, and it's not from a stat line. Like it, That's where she gets a lot of her numbers, but it's more um, vocally in her leadership and how she leads. And I thought tonight Alyssa Fisher was outstanding as well, uh, both in her vocal leadership uh, on the floor. I was really, really proud that Satori Tannen showed some physicality in the post against two bigs. Here is what two seniors, Sam Golanopoulos and Alyssa Fisher, had to say about taking home the win on this special day. This is my favorite team I've ever, not ever played, not ever played with. I'll, I'll put it in that category. Um, I've been here for five years and I've literally had like five completely different teams every single year and this is by far my favorite. For me, this has been one of like the best decisions that I've made to come in and play here and play my last year. Loyola women's basketball team last game of their regular season will be on Saturday, March 2nd, an away game at George Washington. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Taylor Zielenbach. Thanks, Taylor. Can you believe we're swinging into baseball season already? The White Sox and the Cubs have begun spring training. Early Sunday morning, the Cubs re-signed outfielder Cody Bellinger to a three-year, $80 million contract. Bellinger had a breakout season, with the Cubs hitting 26 home runs and 97 RBIs. The Cubs had an impressive start to their tra spring training, unlike the Southside Ball Club. The two Chicago Ball Clubs met in a spring training game on the 23rd, where the Cubs destroyed the Sox 8-1. The Sox have been blown out of the ballpark a majority of their games, losing five of their last six games. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Bella Giudice. Thanks, Bella. Yeah, hopefully they can get back into the swing of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm okay. just I'm just rooting for my White Sox. I, I need them to do a lot better than last season. Well, hopefully. You know, always rooting yes. for Chicago teams. I'm a Cubs fan, but 
always rooting for the Chicago <laughs> teams. In more MLB news, here's Joey Neese to discuss the Jersey controversy. Thanks, Vanessa. I can only think of one bad thing with having an extra day in the calendar this year, and it is dealing with these new MLB jerseys for longer than we have to. As players started to show up to spring training this month, many voiced concerns over the look of their new uniforms. This year, all 30 teams have new uniforms designed by Nike and manufactured by Fanatics. An unnamed Baltimore Orioles player said, quote, I think the performance wear might feel nice, but the look of it is like a knockoff jersey from TJ Maxx, end quote. Here, we see the pants that Guardians pitcher Scott Barlow is wearing are completely see-through. Cubs shortstop Dansby Swanson, and Nike athlete, contacted the company asking if anything can be done to change the jersey's look. Looking at the front of the jerseys, fans won't notice much of a difference, but the lettering and spacing on the back has been changed. UniWatch's Paul Lucas said, quote, something about the smaller lettering just doesn't look major league, end quote. Newly signed Mariners player Michael Chavis posted an image of his new jersey, which the Fanatics Twitter responded to by saying that there seems to be something wrong and he should contact the company to fix the issue, mistaking a real player for a customer. Nike has also gone away from embroidered logos and has replaced them with heat press patches. Commissioner Rob Manfred responded to the controversy saying, quote, they're designed to be performance wear as opposed to what's traditionally been worn, so they are going to be different. I think after people wear them a little bit, they're going to be really popular, end quote. So it appears that baseball fans are just going to have to get used to these new jerseys. Reporting for RSL, I'm Joey Nies. Thanks, Joey. So interesting. You know, I'm no fashion ex expert, but um, those jerseys were just, they were something. Anyways, in more Loyola news, the men's basketball team has been making headlines this season. Notably, graduate student Brayden Norris is 14 assists away from 500 career assists at Loyola and Miles Rubin is just 10 blocks away from becoming the program's single season leader according to Loyola Athletics. Now tied for second place in the Atlantic 10, the Ramblers have made a statement this season but not without the leadership of head coach Drew Valentine who was named ESPN's head coach of the week. Valentine has 55 wins under his belt as head coach and continues to develop the culture around his team. Congratulations, Coach. We can't wait to see what the Ramblers do in March. Speaking of, the A-10 tournament is less than two weeks away, and with plenty of surprises so far this season, there's only one major question remaining. Who will win the A-10 tournament? Reporters Lucas Kim and William Bazone joined me to discuss this hot topic on The Ramble. Welcome back to another edition of The Ramble. I'm your host, Lucas Kim, here with Vanessa Hoxha and William Bazone. We are less than two weeks away until the A-10 Basketball Championship Tournament. Fifteen teams will take their talents to Brooklyn for the A-10 title. The current leaders are Loyola, Richmond, Dayton, and BCU. Loyola Chicago has had an absolute bounce back year this year, while Dayton and Richmond have remained consistent. But I'm curious to know, who's going to punch their ticket to March Madness? William, I'm going to start with you. Well, it's, it's obviously great to see you, Lucas. It's great to be here. And as, as a resident Atlantic Talk analyst, go follow A10 Talk on Twitter. I get to write for them. They do a lot of great coverage. I love Loyola, and I'm pretty high on them. I, I remember when I hosted the Ramble last semester, I said they'd be finishing as high as third, and they're, they're sitting at the three seed right now. I think they're looking really good. But for me, I think it could be the Richmond Spiders winning the Atlantic 10 tournament and going to March. But it is possible there are multiple bids. But I think right now, mm. Richmond is the most promising team out of the field of 15. Because look, I see. they've beaten two of the top four teams. Right. They've beaten Loyola, which, well, might have gone another way, had some, some questionable calls gone in our favor. But they also beat Dayton on their home floor. Right. They have a chance to beat VCU on Saturday. So, And correct me if I'm wrong, is Richmond ranked? Richmond is unranked, they but are they're, unranked right now? they are, okay. they, I think they're net, I, I don't know they're net off the top of my head, but you know, they are, they're a pretty okay. good team. They're up there. All right. Um, and so you got Richmond then, right? I, I think Richmond, they're just a consistent team from top yeah. to bottom. And I think what really separates them from Loyola mm -hmm. is they're secure with the ball. Sure. They don't turn the ball over a lot. They have the best turnover margin in the Atlantic 10 mm -hmm. and they don't foul a lot either. 14.2 personal fouls a game. That's 14th best in division one. Right. And they're great on the defensive end. Obviously, there's about six teams in the Atlantic 10 you could say are defensively good. So 
I just think Richmond really has it on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. All right. And they just do the little things right that Loyola doesn't do. All right. Seems like they're a complete team. Vanessa, what do you think? <laughs> well, Lucas, uh, first, thanks for having me. You know, I just have to go with my Ramblers. I think Loyola, Loyola's going to do it like Kim Kardashian said. We didn't come this far just to come, come this, this far. far. <laughs> and, I, and I think that um, okay. Drew and his crew are going to do everything they can to um, really excel, especially in this game against Dayton. I think, I think that they're going to turn some things around. They had, they had a little bit of a, of a bumpy game with uh, St. Bonaventure, okay. but I don't think that really this defines who they are. I feel like they've been defining themselves all season, right. wh whether it's defensively or offense. I mean, they've, they've shown the team that they are and – they had, a, like I said, growing pains in the their first year in the Atlantic 10, but I feel like they've figured things out. I mean, you have powerful forwards like Philip Olsen who are just pounding the ball down, and Miles Rubin, who is a key player on, on the Ramblers. And he's and, a freshman. And he's a freshman. I mean, this program has Young so much talent. growth and to be done and that is still being done currently. And um, I just think when you keep feeding players like Braden Norris and, and Des Watson, and right. I just feel like they can really get the offense going and put points on the board and make it happen. Well, as of now, I think Loyola is ranked third, but in the betting books, I think they're ranked second to win the A-10 championship, I'm pretty sure. I, right yeah. now, Richmond is ranked number they're one ranked to take one. it. Um, I mean, could Loyola get a bid to the March Madness tournament if they do well in this tournament? I think it's really hard, and I don't think that they have the real – because obviously the tournament committee loves to look at resume. Loyola's yeah. had some really bad losses, right? They had that quad four loss against UIC mm -hmm. early in the season. That was one you'd love to have back. That Tulsa game is a quad three loss. Those are losses that tournament teams that want to make the tournament – need to not have mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. to be considered by the committee. So I think if it were going to be a two-bid league, and this year it might not be looking like it. That's why UMass has moved, right? Like they're tired of, you know, UMass is middle of the pack this year. They want a chance yeah. to really get that auto bid every year. So that's why you move conferences. It was more for football, but I won't get into that. But Vanessa, I have a question for you. Sure. Loyola hasn't beaten any of the top four teams, at least yet. Tonight's the Dayton game. But do you think that that factors into Loyola not making the tournament? or even being competitive in the semifinal round, quarterfinal round, and the championship game? Well, William, to answer your question, I think that we're going to see um, a little bit of a different outcome tonight, hopefully, uh, in my opinion. All right. um, I think they can turn things around. I feel like if anyone in the A-10 were going to upset people and kind of oh, shut yeah. people up, it's our Ramblers. I mean, they've done it this season. They were protected eighth in the preseason poll. That is true. That's and look at them the now. Point. And look at them now. Top two. And I think it's Top exciting. Two. I Top think three. if I really had to say it right now, based on Loyola's resume and where they're trending, I think they could get an NIT bid. And guys, I know you guys want to go to March. You want to go to March. We're I going know to you March. Do. I know you do. But We're going to March. My thing is, they might be. I, I, know Drew, <laughs> I know Drew Valentine's not looking at his desk and saying, well, we have the NIT, whatever. His death? His oh, desk. Oh, his oh, desk. His desk. Not okay. his death. That would okay, be very okay. unfortunate. But <laughs> he's not at his desk and with his team. He's like, well, at least we have the NIT. No, but like... at Playing postseason basketball is still great for these fifth years and seniors and all these guys to even get tournament experience and play better opponents so mm -hmm. that next year you can schedule and be ready for those non-conference games. Yeah. And that can, if you really do want to make it to March Madness, you've got to have that non-conference well, resume looking good. It seems like Loyola is, has a reputation for being a Cinderella team. So, yeah. I mean, you never know. They could be underdogs mm -hmm. coming into this. I feel like they're underdogs coming into this. Yeah. We'll just have to see. Well, I can't wait to see how all the teams are going to play this year. We're sending a crew to Brooklyn, so be sure to check Instagram and YouTube for our special coverage of the tournament. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Vanessa. Speaking of the A-10, the University of Massachusetts will leave the conference at the start of the 2025-26 academic year. The decision was made earlier this week by the Mid-American Conference, UMass's new home. UMass was a founding member of the A-10 Conference in 1982, so this will be a big change for their athletic program. With that, that wraps up this episode of Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on X, TikTok, and Instagram at Loyola RSL, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There you can follow RSL's coverage of the men's A-10 tournament at the Barclays Center March 14th through the 17th. From all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Kirsten Richardson. And I'm Vanessa Hoxa. We'll see you in Brooklyn, and don't forget to turn off the lights.